I get into an elevator and we go up one floor, the elevator door opens and Keanu Reeves walks in. Mm-hmm. I'm just a normal dude who does cool stuff. Right, okay. <laughs> I think we'd all like to be like that, though, wouldn't we? <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of the Insights of Everything. Today I'm with, um, I'm going to, it's a long list here, right, with an actor, a stuntman, a coach, an instructor, a martial artist, a producer, a writer, a musician, a psychologist, and I think there are a few more other uh, things I could describe this one, but um, I'd like to welcome John Jue Zhang to the thank podcast. You very much welcome, for thank me. you. Thank you. Pleasure. And also, I just wanted to roll out some other things. So, actually, I'll Bring that in in a second. So, first question, John, is what is the rock like? <laughs> he is enormous. He's larger than life. I think, um, especially with um, not just physically, but in personality as well. He's very generous, very giving, and just a really nice guy. Yeah. Um, uh, I worked with him for a day, and he was, um, yeah, just very professional. And you know, he greeted everybody, and yeah, I. He comes across as that because that's why I asked you the question because he, he has he has this persona of of I grew up watching him as a fan, a fan of <laughs> WWE right um, but he comes across as a larger than life and yes. a generous soul and it'd be absolutely. interesting even though you yeah. met him for a day mm. you still got that perception absolutely and I think um, with uh, the Rock he is he's a people person mm-hmm. you know and I think especially being an entertainer for so many years. Um, he's very good with fans. He's very good uh, just as a personality on set and um, and just an inspiring guy, you know. Yeah. And I think with him, it's like um, he's down to earth as well, and and that's very important. As yeah. as big as he is, he's very down to earth. Nice, good, right. The next hard hitting question is: How many bones have you broken? <laughs> uh, ankle and concussions. Uh, and oh, well, I've been concussed a few times. That's, yeah. Uh, that I can remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, you know, there's a list of injuries there. But um, because I have a martial arts background, uh, the the extent of injuries goes a bit further back uh, before I got into film work uh, as well. So it's um, yeah, it's a long list. And, and my um, sports massage person, my uh, osteopath, my chiropractor, they're very always very happy to see me. <laughs> I bet they are. Yeah, I bet they are. And then so you talked about martial arts, and I've talked about a long list of of words to describe you um is it seven different types of martial arts you or more generally yeah it fits into those uh, about seven different mm. styles um so they um there's a lot of different styles like kung fu but there's a lot of different styles of kung fu um karate different styles of karate as well but um and i think it's uh i think the other ones are aikido jiu-jitsu arnis salat and hakido um to name a few but it's just a general blend of them um mm. So I started training in 1993, so um, I was five at the time. And yeah, I I trained in a lot of different disciplines and my dad always wanted us to be as well-rounded as possible Mm -hmm. and to be as, um, my dad always said to me, um, you know, if you train in a very hard style, um, you know, you're feeling very strong and everything, what happens when you're not feeling so strong? Can you still exert the same kind of force? Maybe not. So you need to learn softer stuff. Um, And the human body is hard, soft, very hard and very soft. So it's good to learn styles that that cater to all of those things. But I think with the martial arts, it's just been a lifestyle. It's something that I've always done. Uh, It's something I've done every day Mm -hmm. for... 30 years. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, well, I think that the martial arts has that connotation of being able to create or, or exude a certain different side of you, mm. right? In, in for those moments in crisis or danger or whatever, you know, everyone thinks oh, I learned karate, which means I can fight, fight, my, fight my way out everywhere. <laughs> but it's not about that to no. a degree, but I'm not an expert in that, in that area. But so, John, if, if, if I was to descri- use one of those words or a couple of those words to describe you, what, what are you? Are you an actor, stuntman, a stuntman actor? What do you, what do you, how would you like to be described? I'm just a normal dude who does cool stuff. Right, okay. <laughs> I think we'd all like to be like that, though, wouldn't we? But, um, but I, I know talking before we started is that acting is probably what you're keen to do now, yes. more, probably more than the stuntman. Maybe is, is that how you'd like to be known moving forward? I think um, generally I'd like to be just known as just a nice dude. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, I think with what I do for a living, for instance, I try to keep those things separate. Um, it's like... What I do doesn't necess- uh, what I do for a living doesn't necessarily define who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if, say, I'm doing a film and I play a gangster, 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's um, having to detach from those characters, you know, I, I'm not who I play, you know. Mm. <laughs> mm. But I think, um, you know, I, I think it's how other people would describe me. It's like, um, he's a great guy, he's easy to work with, and, you know, he's down to earth. And th those are things that I would resonate with. Mm. Um, and I think uh, any industry that I've worked in previously, if people can have that same impression of me, even better. You know, right. it's, um, and I think, um, yeah, it's like where my passions lie, for instance. You know, I had a passion for this, I have, I have a passion for that. And it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just very lucky to have done all those things that and worked in those industries. But, um, mm. but yeah, I think these days um, I am transitioning out of the stunts into more of the acting. Uh, so I have a show coming out in September called The Brother's Son, yep. which will be my first major acting role. So a lot more lines to learn. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like... Um, uh, I, just because I think with stunts, there is a shelf life to it, um, especially with all the injuries that ensue and general wear and tear of the, of the body. And it's like, um, yeah, I think arguably um, <laughs> nobody ever dies from bad acting, but from bad stunts being performed incorrectly, for instance, there's a lot of mm. risk and sometimes worse Yeah. Know, Worst things can happen. So you, I was going to talk about Brother Sun later, but mm. as you've talked about it now, you, is, is it something you're super excited about? Are you nervous about it? You know, because some of the cast are quite, you know, uh, famous people. <laughs> I know you met, met, met people, but you, so ultimately you're excited about this role? Absolutely. And yeah. it's um, especially having worked with Michelle Yeoh, who is like a staple in my childhood, she is incredible. Mm. Um, especially she just won an Oscar, you know. Yeah. Long time coming. We're all very proud of her. Mm. Um, I think it's like, Last year, uh, I watched Everything Everywhere all at once with my friends. And um, I remember when we left the cinema, I said to them, God, I'd love to work with her. <laughs> yeah. And a few months later, it actually happened. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm super excited for it. And um, yeah, September. How did it, how did it come about? Because sometimes, you know, we, we talk briefly uh, off air, so to speak, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's the right place, right time. So do talk about how, how did this whole come about? So uh, I got an email uh, from a casting agent. Um, uh, How boring, was, you got an email. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, them asking me to, you know, read for a role because mm -hmm. they thought I might be good for it, uh, for instance. And it was, um, yeah, I, I didn't know anything. There wasn't a lot of press about this. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, nothing had been released besides the show being greenlit. Um, so I thought, okay, yeah, no, wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I auditioned a few times and everything, uh, mostly over Zoom. Um, and uh, what the, was that like, considering over Zoom? Yeah, I think post COVID, um, especially during lockdowns, uh, that was Zoom calls were the thing. Now you know it's so I was kind of used to it, um, but it, it can be quite daunting because not everyone is on camera and you don't know how many people are actually watching you. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, true. And yeah, and there might be a bit of a time delay um, with your internet connection, for instance. So it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so then once the cast got announced um, by Netflix, I didn't know Michelle Yeoh was going to be in it until okay. it got announced. So I found out that the same day everyone else did. So That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, my social media blew up and then I realized Michelle was going to be in it. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was very daunting, you know. It, it's, but I'm super excited. yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, no, it'd be nice. It'd be nice because I think. Have you done? I know we've talked about you've been in Doctor Strange, The mm. Gentleman, you know, Fast and Furious. But this this is your first sort of series, or have you been in previous series before? Um, as an actor, yes. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of other smaller projects where you know where I've done acting, but this will be my my biggest role to, mm. to date. But I think getting the role, getting the phone call, saying uh, it was, um, oh, hey John, oh, yeah, it's Jenny from from casting, uh, downtown casting. I thought, oh my goodness, oh, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> and she said, oh, I'm John, I'm good. You got the role. And I think there was a good, it felt like um, forever that I didn't say anything because mm. I was processing it. Mm. I mean, in, in, in reality, probably only a few seconds had passed, but mm. <laughs> I think that was the happiest day of my life, you know? It was really? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, oh my God. <laughs> no, well, yeah, congratulations, that's, look that's forward to it. So, so did, is it come out in the year or you start filming? Back so we year. filmed last year. Oh, okay. So I spent four months in LA, and okay. it was the uh, just a phenomenal experience. And it was like um, culture change as well. I mean, it's very hot there. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was over thirty degrees every day, and um, very sunny. But yeah, I, I wow. I think I spent four months there and uh, got to work very closely with the stunt team. And yeah, um, 
I think when I came back, I thought, God, it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people are like that, totally, Absolutely. with the, with the English uh, weather up and down. So coming back to sort of some of your, mm. your film bits, what, what's the, before you got the call mm. uh, from Jenny, what was the proudest moment or best moment of your career? I think uh, working on Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw, yeah. um, especially getting to work with The Rock was super cool. Um, I'd also say um, The Gentleman, that was, that was a highlight as well. Um, yeah, my death was a, a slow one. <laughs> and then um, I'd say working on Marvel Eternals, that was yeah. a dream come true for me. Uh, because as a child, uh, when you do martial arts, for instance, it splits into three main categories. You have fighting, health, and performance. And in a martial artist's career, you'll probably do all three. Um, so it's like, okay, uh, you know, I think fighting I'm done with now. I, I, I never want to go back to competitions or anything. Um, health, yes, I'll always train for health. And performance, that's what I do now. Um, mm -hmm. So as a child, I remember telling the careers advisor, you know, I, what do you want to be? Uh, I said, well, really like to be a superhero. <laughs> if I couldn't be one for real, I'd settle yeah. for playing one in a film or enjoy the tax-free income of a supervillain. Right. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, sure. So then um, over the years, you know, doing some jobs here and there, um, one day I um, got a message uh, saying, you know, we think you'd be great as a stunt double for one of our lead actors for this upcoming film called Marvel Eternals. I thought, oh, my goodness. And, of course, it, um, I got a phone call and... Uh, they said, yes, for uh, one of the lead actors. In my heart, it was like, I hope it's Don Lee. Please be Don Lee. Please, mm -hmm. be, please be Don Lee. And she said, it's for an actor called Don Lee. I was like, oh. <laughs> John, Johnny, you still there? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was, um, that was a dream come true because he's yeah. one of my heroes. Yeah. And he was in Train to Busan. And um, so I was the, his stunt double for Eternals where he played Gilgamesh. And that was a three-month job and mm -hmm. it was... Um, just, I, I learned a lot from him as well. So that was a huge highlight for me uh, as a stunt performer. Um, and I think him as a person just inspired me to be a, a better performer, mm -hmm. a, a, just a better person in, in general. Mm -hmm. um, especially as he would come on set and just remember everyone's names. I thought that's a really small, great attitude Small things, have. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just a great guy. Yeah, nice. No. And um, just a personal question. If you, if you are a stuntman, mm. does that make you want to become an actor? Because you're surrounded by it. Yes. Do, yeah. I don't know. I don't know That's any true, stuff, yeah. and I, you, you'll know far more than me. But <laughs> how many have become actors? Do you know? So um, mm. you get stunt performers who do become, who do have a couple of acting roles here and there. But a lot of stunt performers they came from like a parkour, free running background, mm. or a martial arts background, and some of them just like to do the the action stuff. Mm. Um, not all of them want to be actors, um, and some of them might have a few lines here and there. But some of them. Generally, are just happy doing, you know, falling off buildings, you yeah. know, falling down the stairs, you know, and the young so, guys basically. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, quick question: How many times have you died, John? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. I think offhand, I can think about fifteen times. Fifteen yeah. times, okay. That's not including separate takes. That's um, fifteen separate. Uh, <laughs> movies, yes. Yes. really? Yeah. Okay. So you, so you don't have a reputation for dying and everything. You oh, I'm really good at it. <laughs> You're really good at it. Yeah. Slow, painful, yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Abs nice. Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> so one of the things um, I also did uh, when I did some research about you, um, sort of a, a bit of IMDb and so Have you been in EastEnders? Yes. Uh, I played a prisoner. Um, <laughs> prisoner number one. Uh, you know, I don't think I, I was even assigned a number. Right. Um, yeah, no, uh, I did EastEnders back in 2018. Right. Um, got to meet Danny Dyer, which is great. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he, he's exactly how you would imagine him to be. Yeah, yeah a great guy, just, uh, very down to earth and um, says, says his, speaks his mind. And it's, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah really refreshing. It's, uh, no, um, I think EastEnders, I was on it for three or four days. Right. Um, yeah, but I think... <laughs> Initially, there was a fight scene that was going to ensue, and I don't think it happened. So, you know, <laughs> I actually did. I didn't do too much on that. Right. Okay. Well, it's, it's on your. It's on your way. I can, yes. can find out uh, <laughs> that you've been in EastEnders. So that's a tip. And also, um, you've met Keanu Reeves before. Is that correct? Right. What's he like? So he is. Everything the internet says about him is true. Right. Um, so um, I worked with him eleven years, no, twelve years ago on my first film, uh, Forty Seven Ronin, and um, I remember being stood next to a fire bin because it was so cold and 
Um, this was maybe about 30 minutes before we started shooting. So he came over and just, hey, man. I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, he, he's super nice. And I remember talking to him every night for that week. He'd just come over and just we'd just chat for maybe five minutes before he got hurried off, hurried off to get into, you know, um, get his makeup and final mm -hmm. checks. And, um, and then randomly... Uh, in well, last year when I was in LA, I was in downtown with Allison, one of the costume ladies from my show. So we weren't on a film set or anything. We were just going to get my jacket sorted. Um, I get into an elevator and we go up one floor, the elevator door opens and Keanu Reeves walks in. Mm -hmm. And nobody is phased. Right. But I'm like, that's, that's Keanu Reeves. definitely him. But okay, I'm not going to say anything. No. Um, so... Uh, and Allison's telling me, so yeah, so um, you're filming tomorrow, you're filming Friday, Monday, so we need to get this jacket sorted and everything. Then the elevator door opens as I'm about to step out of the elevator. Keanu Reeves says to me, best of luck with your shoot. And I turn around and I said to him, well, thank you very much, Mr. Reeves. Actually, you and I worked together 11 years ago on 47 Ronin, and that was my first one. You were super nice to me, and you're actually the reason why I'm still in the game, so thank you so much. So sort of all in one breath. Yeah. And he said... Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I said, yeah, no, thank you. I mean, can I get a selfie with you? He said, yeah, dude, of course you can. Yeah. So I can take my selfie with him, shake his hand as the elevator door closed. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then Allison was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, and she said, well, how, how did you stay so composed with mm. that? And I said, well, I've been practicing that speech for 12 years, <laughs> 11 years, you know. <laughs> In front of the mirror for a long time. Absolutely. And a lot of my friends on 47 Ronin, they got photos with him and... I didn't, so right. so I finally got mine. Yeah. And it, but everything they say about him is absolutely true. He is very down to earth. He's very normal and just a great guy. Mm. It seems like the, um, we were talking about earlier about how you maybe you want to re be remembered or the type of uh, or recognised for. And I think Keanu probably has that type of character or persona that he's firstly a nice guy, yes. uh, and he's a cool actor, and he's been in some wicked movies, right? I think, yeah, absolutely. You know, and by the sounds of the people your, of your heroes, are probably all similar types of characters. Yeah, and it's, um, the thing is with Keanu Reeves is, um, and a lot of actors is, it's not necessarily the roles that they do, it's how I remember them outside mm. of, of, of um, how they treat you, for instance. And he, there's no one else like him. Have there been some shockers, though? Um, you yeah, might name names, don't worry, you might catch people shops. off, you know, on their off day, for instance. Yeah. But then the next day, they're probably fine. And yeah. um, and it's like um, I, I'm always very aware that film is a very high pressured environment. So it's like, okay, I'm, you know, if you're getting rushed around by so many different departments, and you know, you, you got different people talking in your ears, telling you what you need to do, this and that. Um, of course, you might catch someone on, on, on a bad day. Mm. Um, and I always regard that to be redirected aggression. Um, so it's like um, someone might snap at you, but it's not because of you. It's because of everything else that's happening. So I never take that too personally. It's mm. like, okay, no problem. Uh, no. Yeah. And I think it's um, – and being aware of that makes me being aware of my own, my own self as well so that mm. I don't snap at anyone. I don't um, – so I, I don't lose that composure under pressure. Yeah. And that, that comes back to my martial arts training, back to my, my meditative training, shall we say. And I think that's, um, yeah, I think for the most part, some of these stars are just, they, they are really nice people. And, um, you know, I think a lot of them don't really want to be um, surrounded by people who are like, oh my God, you, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So it's uh, especially... They need, a, they need a sense or a level of normality yes, in their of lives. Course. Otherwise, you know, if they, I'm sure if they walk... They walk down Sunset Boulevard or whatever. They're probably bombarded by people wanting selfies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite like you, but well, right. I, t I tell you what, I saw the opportunity, and yeah, yeah. it was, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think um, I probably, I, I, when Keanu Reeves walked into the elevator, I, I nodded my head at him just, mm. just to acknowledge, and, mm. and then, but I don't think I would have said anything, um, mm. just because I know what people are like with their yeah. own privacy, especially yeah. with myself as yeah. well, like. Um, I think it's important to be aware of someone else's space uh, and not to infringe on that. I don't know what how how his day's going. You yeah, know, and sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Uh, it's I thought I thought actually you were going to say he was going to go. Hi, John. How you been? <laughs> it's been a long time. I thought I thought that was that would have been perfect, right? I would have been one of hundreds been, and hundreds. Of, he wouldn't have remembered. No, me, I know. But, uh, no, I know. You, I just assume because because especially now with the social media, and you see, mm. um, you know, with his new. John Wick 4, et cetera, he's, mm. he's out there and, and it's all sort of how nice a kind of guy he is and you'll see him on his motorbike hanging out 
at some random spot with some random people that you think, you know, why is he doing that? So I sort of partly imagined he would remember. He remembers everybody he works with. But, you know, <laughs> we'll give the guy a bit of a break. Oh, yeah, does, of you know, 11 years is a, lo- is a long time. And he's had a very long career. He probably, your muscles probably have grown a bit since then <laughs> as well. I also had hair and glasses. Oh, there the you time, go. So. Right. <laughs> Different person completely. Yeah. You, you talked about meditation yes. briefly. So let's touch on that. So how's that? how important has that been in your career to date? Um, because you did touch on about anger issues and things like that, but how that's helped. Yes. But just talk about how, well, firstly, how you got into it and then sort of what role it plays in your daily life or, mm. or certainly uh, within your career. So meditation is the cornerstone of everything I do. Um, and I think it's like uh, you don't want to make a, you don't want to make a promise when you're overly happy. You don't want to make a rash decision when you're angry, for instance. Mm. So it's being as objective as possible. And I think when I was uh, younger, I would, you know, lose my temper and everything. I just, ah, you know, a bit of a rampage. And I thought, you know, that's exhausting. When you, Whenever you do lose your temper, it, it is exhausting. And, I, and a lot of people say, yeah, but, you know, you can just go hit the punch bag or go training. But I think that's the wrong thing to do because you might hurt, your, you might hurt yourself, you might hurt your training partner, mm. and you have to take care of each other. So I think meditation very much is like um, if I drive a Ferrari, for instance, but I'm drunk behind the wheel, then doesn't matter how good the car is, I'm putting myself and other people at risk. And the same thing with, it doesn't matter how big or strong I am, if I'm not objective and calm uh, under pressure, then, or calm in general, then that might have an effect on how I treat other people, and I'd never want that. And I think it's doing a lot of self-work as well, so meditation help to silence those things, um, or help to at least step back and actually observe those those emotions so that I... And I think, especially when I used, used to work in an office, it's like high-pressured environments, for instance. And I always used to think, this is not the hill I want to die on, you know? And if it costs me my peace, it's too expensive. And it's like, um, I think with the meditation side, um, it allows me to not make silly decisions or say things that, you know, and just snap at people, for instance. And it's like, um, say you and I have an argument. Um, we're both really fired up right now. And I might say some very unsavory things and then storm off. Once I'm calm, once I've calmed down, once I've cooled down, I might be like, I really wish I didn't say those things. Mm. And if I was calm, I wouldn't have said any of those things. I probably would have tried to listen to what you were saying, mm. listen to the message behind the words. And, mm. okay, um, mm. and then it's kind of, bringing yourself back down to earth and just remembering actually, you know, I'm sure we can, uh, there's a miscommunication here. And it's like, if when you win an argument, great, but you end up, you know, upsetting someone else. And mm. it's like, I think there's a way to be communicative and understand what someone else is saying without hurting someone's feelings. And I think uh, with the meditation, it certainly helped me with mm. navigating through that. Um, is there a type of meditation that you practice rather more than others? Yeah, so um, so there's a misconception that meditation has to be in a silent room and you just sit down with your legs crossed and you know make the um sound. Mm. Um, that's one form. Um, but then it's like, uh, for me, it is, you know, maybe taking a walk in the woods um, or, you know, going to the gym, for instance. And what I know people say, oh, you know, I don't know how to meditate, but I can't sit still. I'm like, okay, but do you like playing sports? I say, yeah, no, I love going to the gym because, you know, I'm really in the zone or, you know, I don't worry about anything. I said, well, that's your meditation. It's meditation in motion. You're already doing it without realizing you're doing it. Especially if, let's say, you're lifting weights or you're running around the football pitch. Um, you're having to breathe. And meditation is all about breathing. You know, it's like, um, it's like when I'm, uh, if I'm a security guard that's about to throw some people out. I'm a police officer that's about to make an arrest. Or I'm a guy who's about to do a driving test. Or I'm a guy who's about to ask someone to marry me, for instance. Four different situations, but our bodies physiologically go through the same thing. Suddenly, it's like, oh, oh God, you know, and we don't breathe. We stop breathing. And we got, you know, a million things running through our mind. And, you know, it, it can be very daunting. And I think especially with, um, you know, that's perceived danger. And especially if I'm about to do a presentation in front of a thousand people. Okay, I might have rehearsed this, but it's now I've now I've got a thousand eyes on me. Mm. That's terrifying. Suddenly I'm, my breathing changes. So, um, you know, I might forget things that I was going to say. Um, but if I was calm, I wouldn't have done. And I think um, it's knowing how to breathe 
and then our nervous cha- nervous system uh, changes back to what it is when we're relaxed, mm. and that's very important. Now, um, if if I'm about to do a driving test, for instance, um, you know, most things I, I, I rehearsed, I'll probably forget, mm. um, and then I might mess up and everything. Okay, that's because I'm nervous. So the saying is, you know, um, when you're hungry, you're not you when you're hungry. And I think you're not you when you're nervous. You're not you when you're anxious. Mm. So I, I, I try to not identify with my own nerves and not to identify with my own anxieties. So you're not you when you're hungry, so what do you do? You, you eat. Mm. You're not you when you're anxious, you've got to breathe. Mm. <laughs> is, it, is there a moment in your career where you've had to really... Um, Pull on that, pull on those strings, so to speak. Around meditation, is is there a, was there a particular event, movie, or stunt that you, you necessarily had to do where actually you had to be more focused? Absolutely, and I think most film sets are high pressured in nature. So it's like you got lots of people telling you what to do, and they might be different things. So it's um, n- not getting overwhelmed by that. Mm-hmm. I think. Maybe not so much about conflict, but in terms of over, being overwhelmed, it's mm. like you've got hair and makeup who are dabbing you and everything and fixing your co- uh, And then you've got the uh, costume department fixing your costume. Mm. Um, then you've got the stunt coordinator coming over to you telling you, right, this take, can we do, like, do it like this? And I've got maybe, you know, I've got the audio person, you know, who's fixing my mic. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my goodness, I have about a team of people surrounding me or talking to me, telling me what I need to do. And that can be very overwhelming. Mm. And it's like, oh, God, what do I do? <sighs> so it's making sure that we take the time to breathe and actually being as present as possible and not living too much up here, mm. I think. That's quite difficult, though, when you've got all those and you've be, got yeah. the director shouting, right, you know, this is your 55th take of having to fall on your head. I imagine <laughs> that can be quite tricky. Absolutely. And it's um, having the same enthusiasm as you did with the first take yeah. and when I used to work in a call center for instance um, it was having the same level of um, customer service you know offering the same consistent customer service from the very first call to the very last one right mm. before your day ends mm. and okay this call has gone on past 5 p.m. I finished 30 minutes ago 40 minutes ago okay I need to maintain that um, Regardless of how I feel, you know, it's like regardless of what I want to do, for instance. Mm. Um, so I'm a big believer in principle over passion. You do what's right first over what you want to do. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we well, mentioned that in a story before. But uh, one thing that I find re- uh, fascinating, I really want to touch mm. on this because I think this would be good, is, is as, a, as a stuntman, how do you get paid? <laughs> so you do get paid a day rate. Um, right. And then let's say you do a stunt. Um, you get paid per stunt per take. It's called an adjustment. So if I have to dive off this table and land on my face, um, I get an adjustment for that, um, hopefully. Um, yeah. So if I do that four or five times, it's four or five times on top of my day rate, um, which, which is really nice. But um, I find it fascinating. <laughs> that. I, I do, you know, and we talked about, you know, and so you do that 10 times and you, and you get a concussion, you know, you're, and you're reliant on someone else remembering how many takes you've, you've done, right? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, there is always someone who will remember how many takes, um, especially as if it's on camera, there's so many takes already. So mm. that, that, that is evidence that you've done mm. those takes. Yeah. Um, and I think it's like um, one of the Fast and Furious, for instance, I think the first take was all, it's always, the first take is always the scariest because you don't, you know, you've rehearsed it, but yeah, you don't you quite know yeah. what to respect. Yeah. And it's like you might have had a crash mat during rehearsals. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you don't. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, first take. Okay, right. That went surprisingly okay. Mm. Second take. All right, okay. You know, uh, one of the stunt guys tells me, right, um, this time can you do it like this? Okay, okay. And because I've done the first take, I have a frame of reference. This should be okay now. Should be. <laughs> yeah. And then four takes in and like, okay, right, I'm getting a bit tired, but you've, got, you've still got the adrenaline running mm. through you. And you just want to do a really good job. That's, so that's pressure that we often put on ourselves as well. Um, but then it's like, okay, um, you know, you might get a bit of a break and then it's like, all right, John, we need to do that again, but from a different angle. It's like, mm. oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, the, the aches and pains are starting to set in, but no, no, you put on a brave face. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're, you're telling me about a time where you actually, um, well, how many times do you think this has happened where you've, you think you've had four takes, but actually there's been 14 takes? Have there been many occurrences where? Mm, it's happened a couple of times. Um, yeah. It's like um, I, 
There was one stunt. I, I won't say which one it is, but it's um, uh, only because it didn't make the final cut, right. <laughs> which is the worst thing. Yeah. So um, I remember. It must be quite demoralizing, though. If you if you've fallen off a building ten times, it's not even in the movie, <laughs> right? I mean, I think it's got to do with the vision of the film as yeah. well. It's like, does it fit in? Um, of course, I'd like to get footage of yeah. that if I can. Do you get paid? Is there any adjustment if you're in the movie versus not in the movie? We just get uh, yeah yeah absolutely oh, right, okay. so you get paid for right. for that um, um, so you don't get paid after the uh, after the film gets released you right. get paid um, as soon as you send the invoice in after the job's right, done okay you know. okay yeah so, right. so, certainly there've been a few times though where it's like ooh, I oh I got paid a few more times than I remember yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back to your doctor again <laughs> um, one thing I, uh, that I wanted to say, well, firstly, to just still talking about stunts. Mm. What's been, what was the, what's the hardest or scariest stunt you've ever done? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, or, a I few, think, or a few. I think it's like anything when you're working with um, anything that might be wire work, for instance. Um, just explain to me what you mean. So by wire work is like, a, let's say you get a superhero that flies. They're on a harness and it, it, it just lifts them up. Um, and that's great, but if you're getting slammed to the ground by a monster, for instance, mm. you might get lifted up and then there's a wire that pulls you down and you land on your face. Um, you got to do that a few times. That's scary. Um, that's scary the first few times, and then they might say, actually, because there's a crash mat underneath the surface that you're falling on, you can, we can see you bounce a little, so we have to give you a harder mat to fall onto. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the ground, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's um, and then sometimes um, you see in some films where someone takes a really hard fall. Sometimes that that hard floor is actually just a mat that's dressed up as as concrete. concrete. Or whatever, yeah. right. um, still tough to fall onto, but yeah. certainly nicer than concrete. <laughs> yeah, no, but and it, and there, has there ever been that, that that day where you went, you know what? This is actually really easy. I've, you know, I've I've come in, I've done a couple of stunts, and I've left. As you know. Are there those days or are they always difficult? Yeah, um, sometimes it is long days um, over time as well, especially night shoots. They can be very tough. Um, so you could come in at 4 a.m. and finish at uh, – sorry, 4 p.m. and finish at 4 a.m., for instance. Mm. And So uh, if I, any day that I go into, onto a film set, I'm expecting to work a, you know, a minimum of 12 hours. Now, if there's – if I finish early, nice. That, that's really great. If I finish late, that's part of the job. Mm. Um, I never complain about it. And I think it's um, – yeah, certainly there have been days where mm. I came in, did my thing, and um, they wrapped me early, mm. which which is really nice. But um, you know, you can't always hope for that. You know, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, just changing tack slightly, um, we did touch on this, but do you feel because of uh, well, the way you look and the way you sound, mm. to some people, if they've ever, only ever spoken to you on the phone, mm. they may not expect what you look like, right? Absolutely, because you're a man that. <laughs> Was born in Telford, grew up in Shrewsbury, and now lives in Oxford. Right, right. so there's there's a few different <laughs> accents to to mix in. But do you, do you feel that you still get sort of typecast with the whole Jackie Chan, Jet Li type of thing? Or I I do to yeah uh, to a certain degree yes. Mm. But it's like it's what they need. And uh, for the film, for instance, if they need um, a large gangster, um, mm. fine. It's that is part of the job. Yeah. But it's uh, for stunts. Um, yeah, no, that that is just what you do. Mm. Um, and I think getting typecast is fine to a certain degree but it's like it does pay the bills for instance mm. but it's um it's i think it's when that's all you do it's yeah. like ah you know i could do a bit more but um no i certainly had it where um they gave me a line i thought oh that's what you sound like oh goodness me it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah have you ever had many where you've had to do an accent at all or right? of any sorts yeah a couple yeah. it's um and it's like, uh, you know, they might get me to do an American accent or, or a Chinese accent, which is which is a bit bizarre for me, but it's like, yeah. okay, fine. I mean, it's whatever that is required of the character. So long as it's not um, disrespectful mm -hmm. to, to say, my own heritage, for instance, yeah. you know, um, I, I, yeah. Yeah, and that, that, that comes across quite important to you, right? Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And there's a lot of the answers you said. So given, given the fact that I did describe you in, I think, 10 different ways, <laughs> uh, and as you, and, you know, uh, not that your uh, stuntman days are necessarily behind you, but maybe you're progressing to become an actor. You know, how do you split your time up these days? Because we talked about how COVID would have had an impact on yes. you, and, and feel, please feel free to stunt, talk about that. And, you, and you've been in this game for sort of 13 years, but three years probably full time. Yes, that's right. How do you, how do you split your time up now, and, and where do you want to sit? How do you want to split your time up, ideally? So um, 
I very much enjoy my my downtime mm -hmm. um, because when I before I uh, took film full time, for full time I would say, but uh, <laughs> it was like um, working behind a desk, working a lot of part time jobs after my day job. Mm -hmm. um, so I never had a lot of free time before, and these days I I just enjoy that flexibility. And you know, if I have to, you know, tomorrow work on a film set, you know, fine. If I that that's absolutely like, because I, my schedule is so flexible now, I can do that, or I can come to Leicester and speak to you. You know, yeah. it's like yeah, it, it's uh, I can be very flexible. Um, mm. You know, otherwise I just train most days and. But these days, most of my training is rehab, but uh, yeah, <laughs> movement yeah. and mobility. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think down the line, um, I, I wouldn't want my life to change too much. You know, I have a great circle of friends and everything. I love where I live mm. and um, I very much just enjoy uh, just living life, really. Yeah. yeah. But, so you've also got a doctorate, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. What, what is it in? So it's in metaphysics, but I... Uh, is it metaphysics. Yes, but please I explain what metaphysics <laughs> is for me. Please. It is the study of consciousness. But right. I specialize more on the counseling side. Um, right. So um, yeah, I, I I did that because I wanted to explore and actually develop myself. So not so much to counsel others, but to be able to regulate myself. Mm -hmm. And that that was something that's very I was very passionate about. Mm. I, I still am. Um, and I think if I want to help people, I must first help myself. And if I want to, um, it's like I can only donate money if I first have money. I can only give you myself if I first have those things. Mm. Um, so it's like um, uh, like a personal trainer, for instance. You, you, ideally, they should be in decent shape, you know, um, for you to want to train with them because you can see that they've attained some, some things or, you know, um, or they've got experience to do that. Um, so with that, it's like... Um, with the counseling side, for instance, um, I used to work at a university. Uh, and whilst the pastoral care was not the job that I was employed for, it was something that uh, the I, students would come to me for. Mm -hmm. And that, that was important to me as well because they, they could trust me and talk mm -hmm. to me about things that they were going through, not just academic issues, but things that they were going through outside of uni. And yeah, uh, I also worked as a psychologist for the Saudi Arabian national taekwondo team, the Saudi Falcons, which was incredible. Is that a bit random? Um, so like <laughs> so um, the Saudi um, Federation, they spons sponsored their athletes to uh, go to Oxford right. and um, just to train with the best coaches, mm -hmm. learn English, um, get the you know taekwondo training, but also strength and conditioning, best nutritionist, and they needed a psychologist. So I got the call for that. Okay. Um, as a martial arts uh, instructor, um, I, I've got a reputation around um, a bit being an instructor. So it's like um, very much uh, I uh, used to um, do a lot of pastoral care with that as well. And it wasn't just about the physical side, you know, um, it wasn't just about physical, it was all about the mental, spiritual side mm -hmm. and everything. And it's like, okay, especially with self-defense or you know, any kind of martial arts training, you want to be able to handle yourself under pressure. So it's like, um, let's say you've got, uh, I don't know, 10 guys outside waiting for you or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, fighting is normally the last thing you want to do because mm -hmm. you might not come out on top yeah. um, not with so, 10 anyway at least. no no yeah. so it's like a okay, four or five <laughs> I'm, sure can, I'm sure you can handle so then okay how, how can we deal with that situation um so uh when i used to teach a lot more when i used to teach regular classes most of the training was more about how you can handle yourself under the pressure and that's super important so that because fighting is always last resort um so when i used to get new uh, beginners newcomers and everything that would be the first thing i would teach them because in most martial arts classes, they teach that fighting is the last resort. Um, so why do you teach it as the first thing? You know, I think mm. being able to control your emotions or at least have a good handle on your emotions, I always think that if you can handle yourself, you'll always have an impact over the outcome of the situation, and that's any situation. Mm. So um, when I uh, got to work with athletes, for instance, you know, in training, they were fantastic. They could do everything. Um, but as soon as they step onto the mats, now mm. you've got an audience watching you. Different kettle of fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that happens to all of us. Yeah. Um, so it's like spending time with them as well. And um, so, you know, I... I get do you find that... Just using that mm. analogy. So do you find that you, you're, you, become a, you became a better stuntman, for example, 
understanding that because it's the same principle, right? You yes. can practice it in the gym doing the same stunt, but then suddenly you've got 22 cameras, mm -hmm. 100 people watching you, a director making sure he wants to get the tape right, you know, right. makeup artist making sure you want to look right, you know, all of that. Absolutely. Same sort of principle, right? Yes. So those are things that you can apply to any part of your life. Mm. And it's, some, it's stuff that I would recommend that, you, that, that we do. Uh, and that way it makes us... Um, I find that if we are more focused, then we are able to perform better. Mm. You know, it's like if I'm prepared. If someone asks me a question that I had no idea how to answer, it's mm -hmm. it's um, maybe um, one being honest that I don't know it, yeah. or two, you know, actually being able to a way to find out uh, to improvise a little. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's uh, like when I used to do um, like gigs because uh, I I do a lot of music, for instance. Um, yeah. When I used to do a lot of gigs, uh, and um, if I'm playing the piano, but, you know, at home when I was playing the piano, everything was fine, but this piano has been, it had a few too many beers poured down the back. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, the uh, F key doesn't work, or the, these keys don't work. Got to find a way around it. It's yeah. like, and if I come in and I try and play, uh-oh, okay. <laughs> so, so is there anything you can't do? Uh, that, the, the list is endless, <laughs> right? And where do you find the time? That's what I, I want to know. I can't ice skate. <laughs> you can't ice skate, no. So dancing on ice won't, might not no, come no, up no. anytime soon. Well, maybe it, after Brother Sun, you never know. Well, you might need a gig or two, right? Oh, I'm like Bambi on ice. It's, it's yeah. horrendous. Yeah. I have no well, that might, that might be good TV. Uh, oh. yeah. Here's the thing, right? It's like um, for, for a job, they said to me, hey, John, um, can you ride a horse? And I sent a clip of them not being able to get on a horse. Because um, right. I did, uh, I'm not too sure if you've seen, um, I did ITV's Take Me Out. Um. That, wasn't, that wasn't the list too, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure whether you wanted me to mention that. Sure, yeah, not. no. EastEnders, <laughs> yes. No. Take Me Out. Oh, I had great fun on yeah. that. But um, the date was us uh, horse riding. I couldn't even get on the horse. Right. And once I got on the horse, the horse wouldn't move. Right. And it's like, okay. I don't want to look bad in front of my date, yeah. but okay, let's be cool. Okay. <laughs> how, how did the date go? You know, it went really well, but we're still friends. You know, right, it's okay. like, I think we didn't resonate didn't on that a... Well, then, did <laughs> right. well, you know, it's, um, we didn't resonate on a relationship level, no. but you know, we still have a lot of love for each other and we're, and we're really well, good that's friends. That's good. Look, I mean, that, look, I've watched that show a couple of times. <laughs> and you, you, never, you never know why people are on there necessarily. That Maybe they're after their 15 minutes, you know, never, you know or mm. actually... I'm sure there's a stat out there somewhere where you can find out how many people. It's a bit like Love Island, right? You know, what are the main... Anyway, Love Island's, Love Island's a different podcast for a very different time. Um, so we talk about music. I mean, that's just a passion you must have, right, outside of everything. You, you know, you're not trying to apply that to any... Uh, no, looking for um, the perfect actor, stuntman, musician <laughs> role, role that's out there next. Well, if they needed a large, bold Asian who can move and play piano... Perfect. Yeah, hands up. <laughs> but I think with the piano, it's, uh, I mean, I play violin and viola also. Um, I should practice Literally, there more, is nothing you can't <laughs> Guitar? I bet you could pick up a guitar and uh, have a good go, I'm you? a little rusty, yeah. but uh, I can play a couple tunes. But there you go. It's not something I can say I do, but, right. it's, um, but with the piano, I, um, I released a piano album in, during the first lockdown. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> we had free on sale time. on Amazon, right? <laughs> absolutely yep. on Spotify on there everything. You go. But it's uh, I think with the piano, it's um, I use that as part of my meditation. Mm. So a lot of that was um, so my album is essentially a it's a musical diary. It's a diary without words. So when I hear those tunes or when I play them, I know exactly what I was going through at the time, right. and it was like a pivotal moment in my okay. life. So, um, hoping and you're hoping necessarily that music might help somebody else that might be going through absolutely. a similar thing, but I wouldn't tell people what that meant to no, me. No, yeah. Be yeah, because, because I want it's personal, to, right? Yeah, way, yeah. Then, it? yeah. I wouldn't want my influence to influence them. I want them to just enjoy the mm. enjoy the journey. But you're not retiring on the the rights of it. I, no, absolutely no, no, not. No, no. But I'm, it took me 11 years to finish the album. Okay. And um, of course, when I released it, oh, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I released that the same day I released my martial arts book, um, right. which was, these were two things that were on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, okay, during the first lockdown, we have a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I, this is something that I really want to do. Um, and it'll be on my to-do list for a while. And okay, let's just do it. Mm -hmm. um, it took a lot of it. I mean, there's 26 tunes in my album, 26 of the ones I could remember how to play. Uh, right. there were, there were, there's about 50, yeah. 60 okay. that I just couldn't remember. What's it called? It's called Ether Reality. E, e for reality? Ether Reality. Ether, is there going to be an Ether Reality 2 um, in 10 years' time? 
Maybe. Maybe, maybe. 20 years we'll time. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, ne- the next part of the journey. I, let me just go back for a second because I'm, I'm quite interested. Mm-hmm. Was, was there any... Um, I'm going to come back to stunts here. Please. Was there any stunt that went wrong or was improvised by the actor that maybe you didn't know was going to happen? Things like Did that Did you do... get punched in the face, John? That's pretty much that... what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, it, it does happen yeah. it's, it, because um, we're not infallible. I mean... Mm. And we're all human at the end of the mm. day. Sometimes people forget because they panic or whatever. Um, you know, suddenly, you know, they've skipped a few sequences. Now they're, they're, they're onto this sequence. Yeah, yeah. It does happen. Right. Um, and that's fine if it's hand-to-hand, if there's, yeah. a, if there's a weapon involved and yeah. <laughs> you might get bludgeoned with, with yeah. something. It's like an... It's not overly nice, but, yeah. you know, it's understandable. Right. Um, You're forgiving. I'm always very forgiving, yeah. um, but if it happens repeatedly, then it's like, okay. Mm. Yeah, so, sort yourself out. And I, I'm i gentle in how I give feedback as well yeah. because I think they're already under a lot of pressure mm. and you know not to hit me. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> And the stunt coordinator will come over and say, okay, uh, make sure that this time you got to do this, this. Uh, so, um, you know, and John, are you okay? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah. Okay. absolutely. And and to, to be honest, it, it happens more than you might think it's like um and name a movie go on name a movie where you've you've been hit in the face you know it's, it, it's a lot of them all it's, of them. It, it, it's, it's a all lot of them. of them it's a lot of them and sometimes um a bit of contact actually sells it better as well yeah um and i'll always say to the actors if you do hit me don't stop just keep going i'll, I'll roll with it <laughs> just keep hitting me in the face yeah i, I prefer it looks take, good on camera right i mean and it gives me more to react to um and i think um especially with my martial arts background um I, i've taken hits before yeah it's uh so um and, and full hits for instance uh whereas on film it probably won't be someone actually sucker punching you no. uh um, now I know why you've died 15 times. <laughs> you're too nice. You know, if you're going to kill me, just do it properly. Right? Don't leave any chance. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so t- uh, just touching on sort of maybe the, more about the future hmm. for you, because um, you talked about you know you've you've ri- you've written a movie, for example, and um, you've got your music, and you've been a producer, I believe, as well, according to the, the stats. Is, is that is that the natural progression for you? Maybe move, maybe moving behind. The camera, if you like to, and and what would be your ideal if you, if you were to do that? What's the ideal movie that you would like to produce and write? So, right with the producer, how many side, stunt? Would you be as an actor? Would would you appear in it? Would you be the stuntman in it, or would you just separate yourself? I would. So, um, you, I think you do. As It'd a be producer, all about you, John. You, <laughs> you would need a level of separation mm. and, and detachment, but it's like I'd like to have a say in some of the. the how the fight scene might yeah. look, but uh, but no, no. These days, I'm very much enjoying producing things locally uh, in Oxford. So I'm working with my friend, who's the head of the film department at the local university. Uh, really talented filmmaker, and um, uh, you know, he's one of my best friends. Yeah. So um, I, uh, you know, ideally, I'd like to be producing stuff with him um, independently for mainstream. From, from mainstream outlets, that that that's the that's where the I'd like to yeah. what I like to do more of for sure. But um, I, but I very much like to explore how much further I can take it as a as a performer, for instance, yeah. um, and just enjoy the ride. Yeah. But I I'm in a I'm at a weird state of my life where um, stage of my life, I should say. Uh, I'm 35 now, but in terms of things that I wanted to do, I've done everything that I set out to do as a kid. Right. So as a kid, I set out, wrote a little list of things yeah, that I yeah. wanted to do, and I managed to t- tick them all off. Yeah. Um, you know, whilst I didn't get to be a real life superhero, I got, I got pretty close. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm happy with that. You I'm know? sure. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of uh, young boys and girls and, and teenagers who probably think you are a superhero, given the fact you're in certain movies. Yeah, absolutely, right? but it's, I mean, which is really humbling. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, most I'm, people don't get to tick off most of the things on that they've dreamt as a as a, young, as a young boy. You may have dreamt of ten things. You may have done any none, none of them. Well, right. that's absolutely. And I, I think, um, like, tomorrow I'm doing a talk um, at the local um, scout club, um, which I, I love because they always yeah. ask the really, really cool uh, questions. But, um, better than me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's it's uh, very much, um, I think the world is big enough for us all to have what we want to achieve and more. Mm-hmm. So if we have a dream, not now does not mean not ever. Mm. Um, and it's just keeping that dream alive. Mm. And, you know, I think it's making a plan as well. Changing the plan but never the goal. Mm. So it's, if this is what I want to do, okay, yeah, let, let's do it. And I think, especially with martial arts, I took that 
as far as I wanted to go with it. I didn't want to compete anymore. I think I didn't want to, and because I'm out and about a lot more now, I can't, it's tough to hold regular classes. But um, last year I sponsored a martial arts expo um, and, and it was great, you know, I think I sponsored two, but it was, it's just facilitating other martial artists to come together into one place, mm. all from different disciplines, and we all get to learn from each other. Mm. You know, we might be from different places, but we're all the same family, mm. and there's something to learn from all of us. And, mm. you know, the purpose of those events is to be as open-minded as possible, and that is the approach that I would recommend for anyone, just to have an open mind. You know, um, especially if you have a dream or an aspiration, it's like... It's not a straight line, mm. and it's it's. Um, I think as a kid, I thought, right, okay, be a movie star, retire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I think paid millions of pounds per movie. Yeah. Well, that'd be nice, but it's, yeah, yeah. But then it's going everywhere. You know, it's um, doing different things, and um, well, you, so you, you were yeah. talking about that earlier. How you know, you, you you've worked in the brother uh, the brother son, for example. Yes. But it's not like suddenly you know you get fur you get picked up at the airport and in a, a uh, in a in a wonderful car to the to the you get your flights paid for you'll get your hotel paid you get it's not always even even when you think you've made it you may not have made it mm. so to sp so to speak there's still a bit of a human in there you, where you had to find your own accommodation for example you know you won't put up in a hotel whereas so yeah I'm sure um, Brad Pitt doesn't necessarily have to <laughs> find a, a hotel for example but so I mean that is it's all part of the yeah. part of the game you know and I think um, I'm just grateful for anything that I do get. Um, I, I'm always in the attitude of gratitude. I think that's that's a very important place to be. So that way, I'm not, uh, I, you know, I, I I live well, and I think um, I live within my means. And I think um, because most of my friends are not, especially my social circle, they they don't work in film. They're not actors. They're not stunt performers. Um, it's like I'm, I'm a comparatively really normal mm. person. You know, it's mm. and I think especially when. Um, you see these huge actors and everything. Now they actually, you know, despite what they do, they're, they're actually pretty normal too. You know, it's yeah. and, and they like to be. Well, that's cool. interesting to hear, though, because mm. you, you know you, you watch the news and you'll you'll find that you know a, a snippet of what someone's done, and you mm. make that judgment about that particular person. I think so it's interesting that you say that yeah. most people you've worked with. But I wonder whether that's because of your outlook on life to a degree, and the fact that you know you're enjoying the journey, or you, you, you mm -hmm. know, I've put down here, to, you know, do you enjoy the game? Do you find, do you find when you're in certain circles, is it, is it a bit of a game you're playing or are you just John who's in the game? I, yeah, very much John in yeah. the game, but how I regard my life is like a video game. Um, so, uh, you know, as a video game, you can customize your character. You can, you can do this, you can mm. do that. And we're all gonna end up in the same place anyway. Yeah, so true. it's like, okay, what experiences would I like to have accumulated? What achievements would I like to have achieved by the end? Yeah. And how many lives would I have affected by then in, yeah. in a good way? Yeah. Um, so, which is, which, which is why I, I uh, instead of fighting, I turn to teaching. Um, I'd rather help people than hurt people. Um, yeah. And it's very much, um, uh, especially with um, where I'm going with that is, you know, as a video game character, you just accumulate more experience. You keep leveling up. You do different mm. things, and yeah, it's it's uh, that that's kind of how I view. It. You know, I, I regard this to be more of an avatar. You know, and yeah. you know, I can customize certain things, change how I, you know, change the clothes that I yeah. wear, and and so John and, the actor, John the stuntman, and then you got John, yeah, at home and to he, a degree, and right? can, John the lecturer, and, all that, right? <laughs> and he can wear many different hats. Yeah. You know, and it's um, yeah, but but. All those things, the more I learn, the more I realize there is mm. to learn. So it's mm. always kept my feet firmly on the ground. And I think um, certainly when I hang out with other people who don't work in film, for instance, I'm so curious about what they do, you know, and how long they've been doing it for and everything, uh, about, just about their lives, you know. And mm. people say, yeah, but what you do is so cool. It, yeah, it is. But, you know, it's like that's what I do. It's your job. Yeah, yeah. You know. and, but I imagine I that's it. quite hard to... Differentiate, especially if someone is works in a call center nine to nine to five Monday to Friday, mm. and then then you tell them, well, you, I've just come back from LA from a three month <laughs> shoot here. They, they, you know, they're, they're going to assume that your life is more glamorous than necessarily theirs. But I think after a period of time, it's just it's just what you do, right? It's, and you know. it's it's like you know, I enjoy everything as much as everyone else does. Mm. You know, it's like. Um, uh, you know, I, I had Pizza Hut last night. Yeah. And it was wonderful. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's like, um, despite 
uh, my work circumstances yeah. having changed, m my lifestyle hasn't changed. Right. Um, I still still eat a lot of Pizza Hut. So, <laughs> well, just, just I've just written down. Have you ever had to do any sort of radical body transformations, or you've been lucky enough um, not to have to do that? Thankfully, not. No. Um, I think. Um, would you? It would depend. If it's at right. the expense of my health, then mm. I, I, I would err against that. I would mm. probably lean towards not doing that. Mm. But it's um, it really it is really dependent. But um, with my current lifestyle, for instance, I eat one meal a day, um, sometimes one meal every other day. Um, but that is a personal choice. Right. Mm. I think pre-lockdown... How I big's the meal? It's not as big as you'd want it to no. be. No, <laughs> it, because your stomach has shrunk, you know. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, and I think um, as much as you want to eat... How do you do that, though? Because you, cause you go to the gym, right? Mm. Do, is it not... Is that not counterintuitive? But Somehow, no. You know, right. it's... So pre-lockdown, I used to eat seven meals a day. I now eat seven meals a week. Um, so seven meals a day, it's every two hours. You know, um, eat in the morning, eat after the gym, mm. um, take a break, eat at lunchtime, and then eat an after, afternoon meal, and then eat um, in the evening. It's... Mm -hmm. um, Maybe get one more meal in. But so your food bill must be pretty is pretty good now then. It's better. Yeah, but mm. it is. Yeah. Though I think um with that, it's during the first lockdown, it was like, okay, the gyms are closed now. I'm not getting so hungry. So right. you reduce it down right, and okay. eventually getting it down to two meals was actually fine. Right. Down to one meal was tough. Yeah. And that was an adjustment. Yeah. But now I've been doing it for Was that a conscious two. adjustment or did yeah. is that because of lockdown? Um, partially because of lockdown, but then right. it was an, it was a uh, intentional decision to reduce it down to one. Right. And it's like, um, yeah, like today is one of the days where um, I won't eat till later, mm. you know, or I, let's say you and I have lunch today at midday. I generally eat in the evening, so I won't eat until tomorrow night. And mm. I, I will go 30, 40 hours without eating. And it doesn't affect me in terms of my physical performance. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's just a lifestyle now. Yeah. I've been doing it over two years, and, and right. I, I love it. Yeah, okay, mm. so you used to... So we've only got a couple more questions, but it was is, has there been a movie you wish you'd been in? Oh, um... And also, I'm going to get the guys who are behind the camera to ask a question in a minute, so they need to get ready. Oh, press yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Um, film that... Probably Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Right, you know? okay. but, but I was a kid when that came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think maybe like a Jet Li film as well. Right. You know? But these are all things that b were before my time. Right. I think nowadays... But probably formed part of your list of goals, yeah, right? absolutely. You know? I want to be, yeah. be that cool or at least yeah. get taken out by someone that cool. Cool, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think, um, no, it's... It's right place, right time. Yeah. You know, and um, as my friend Jenny, the casting director, says, you know, the right person gets cast for the role. Mm. And um, she, she is someone I look up to. She's a lovely, lovely lady. And I think she, um, she is, I would, would regard to be like a very close friend because mm. I can go to her for advice on such matters. Yeah. Mm. Okay, nice. Right, I'm going to get, any of you behind the camera got a question for John? Dom, you must have a question. Oh, no. Crouching Tiger and Dragon is a great movie, by the way. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Ouch, by the sounds of it. Yeah, you, you know, it's like, I'd like to know how many times he had to do that. <laughs> it's incredible. The guys who did uh, John Wick, um, Bullet Train, um, those guys are some of the best in the world. They, they are just incredible um, stunt performers and also choreographers, action design. And it's like, wow, wow, you, you guys are just next level. Um, and when I was in LA, I got to work with some of them as well, which which is phenomenal. And those guys, it's, as a kid growing up, you, you, you see them in films, you see the kind of cool stuff you do. Getting to be w alongside them or being fans of them from Instagram, for instance, like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm actually doing stuff with you. This is so cool. Uh, it's very humbling because... Uh, they're so nice as well, and they are just experts in their field. So those guys, um, I mean, John Wick 4 is something else. That's a weekend right there for you, Dom. Mm. Right. So you get um, some of the, it's like uh, Fast and Furious, for instance, uh, Hobbs and Shaw, um, that was directed by David Leach, who was a stunt performer himself. Um, and it's like, Stunt performers 
who get into directing understand action design. And it's like, okay, they, and they know what the stunt performers have to go through as well. So, um, yeah, you know, if you've come from that background and you're directing a film, you are, I, I think you're in a better position to, to be able to direct an action scene, for instance. And it, it's incredible to, to see. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, John, my, my last thing is a, a, is a request. So next time you're on a movie set, yes. um, uh, I'm sure, actually, I've got another, another thing. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to talk about War Dogs. Yes. So yes. I know that's on your website. So to, talk to me about War Dogs, how it came out, because I know I think it was with a good friend of yours yes. who's sadly, sadly no longer with us. Yeah. And is that carrying on? Is that something you, you're trying to... Um, I think uh, War Dogs was, it was, so Pete Hernandez the third, who he was uh, a graphic designer and artist and he did a lot of comic books and everything so he got in touch with me because he thought well you've got a great look I'd love to mm. draw you and and actually he involved a lot of the uh, other um, Asian stunt performers and um, actors mm. and got them into the story that he wrote um, I don't think at the moment it's going to go anywhere right. um, because it was led by his vision right, and okay. you know I think um, I have a poster on my wall uh, from yeah, all no, that, the, you know, the illustrations so, look fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and the amazing thing about that was, he certainly, with everyone he drew, he actually got a really deep in, insight into who that person was. Right, okay, um, that comes out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it's um, it's a shame that it won't go anywhere at the moment. But um, you know, I just like to honor him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's a, so, right, so back, back to my request. Obviously, we're sponsored by Everything Branded. So my request is next time you're on a movie set, um, you need to make sure that Everything Branded does all the merchandise <laughs> for, the, for the next movie, if that's okay. I'll so there's some freebies for you to take oh, away. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and, and then obviously you know us, so please make sure their HR department contacts us to do the merchandise. Is that, is that all right? <laughs> well, look, I, 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 I really appreciate your time. Thank you so fascinating, much for having me. Some yeah. fascinating stories. I'm sure we'll, we could probably talk, talk forever, but um, yeah. Ends the podcast with with John and uh, tune in and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>